Welcome to Big Daddy Storytime. We're reading The Magic School Bus Gets All Dried Up. Miss Frizzle is the strangest, most surprising teacher ever, but this morning everything was amazingly calm. We were working on our diorama of the desert. Things seemed normal, which was odd. Nothing is ever normal for long in Miss Frizzle's class. When it comes to deserts, this diorama has everything under the sun. Most of us thought the diorama looked great, but Tim wasn't happy with it. There's something missing, he said. We had sand, gravel, cacti. We even had a heat lamp for desert sun and a fan for wind. We need desert animals. I know, cried Phoebe. Miss Frizzle looked up from what she was doing. Dynamic deduction, Phoebe, she said with a smile. Uh-oh, what's she doing with those canteens? I don't even want to think about it. Luckily for us, Miss Frizzle had exactly what we needed. A giant barrel full of toy desert animals. Phoebe lugged the barrel over to the diorama. While she put the animals into place, Dorothy Ann told us what they were. Tortoise, coyote, kangaroo rat, road runner, gila monster. There were desert animals of all shapes and sizes. Isn't that cute? Only Phoebe could think a gila monster is cute. The animals looked really cool, but Carlos didn't think they'd be able to survive in the hot, dry desert. There's almost no water in the desert. No water, no food, no shelter, she said. Or he said, Phoebe gasped. Scarcity is the name of the game, Phoebes. In no time at all, our cute little animals will be blizzard bait, explained Carlos. The poor things, cried Phoebe. She climbed onto a chair. We've got to take a stand. Form a committee. We'll call ourselves SADS. S. A D S. What is she talking about? Beats me. S A D S stands for Students Against Against Desert Scarcity. Phoebe declared, "Scarcity because food and water is hard to find in the desert. Maybe we should take a field trip." Arnold suggested. Everybody looked at Arnold. Usually he hates field trips, but this time he was prepared. He carried a bag full of equipment. He was dressed from head to toe in desert gear, and he was reading a field trip survival guide. Miss Frizzle got that funny gleam in her eyes. She is always ready for a field trip. Before we knew it, we were aboard the magic school bus, heading for the desert. What do you have in the knapsack anyway? Oh, a little sunblock, a snake bite kit, a few dozen uh, mallow, mallow blasters. Suddenly the school bus started zooming down the road faster and faster. Then all at once the bus changed into a plane. We lifted off the ground and soared over some mountains. Phoebe looked worried. Miss Frizzle, she said, this isn't a desert. These are mountains. We must be going the wrong way. The Frizz shook her head. If it weren't for these mountains, Phoebe, there wouldn't even be a desert. Haven't you guys ever heard of the rain shadow effect? Carlos asked. Nobody had except Miss Frizzle, of course, so Carlos explained it to us. When warm, moist air rises over the mountains, he said, its water vapor condenses into rain or snow, so it rains and snows over the mountains leaving the land on the other side as dry as a desert. No fair. Why should the mountains get all the work or all the water? Anybody got an umbrella? Without warning, Miss Frizzle leaned on a lever. The bus took a nosedive. Ah, everyone cried. Everyone except Arnold, that is. He was busy reading his field trip survival guide. Field trip tip number 63 he read in the event of a rapid loss of altitude you may have to put on a parachute Liz my parachute please not a pair of shoes 
A parachute! We were about to crash, but the frizz flipped the switch and the school bus changed into an all-terrain desert vehicle. At the very last minute, we rolled to a smooth stop. Whew! That was a close one. You said it. The sun in the desert was hot, hot, hot. We all started to sweat, except for Miss Frizzle. She always keeps her cool. Above us, a vulture flew in circles, but Miss Frizzle didn't seem to, did, didn't seem to notice. Come along, class, she said. We're here to experience the desert. Take chances. Make mistakes. Get dusty. Is, is it just me, or does this look like our final field trip? Come on, guys. We've, uh, we'll go to save the animals. We've got to save the animals. Before long, we spied a hungry roadrunner chasing a colored lizard across the desert sand. Quick, Phoebe exclaimed. Everybody back on the bus. We have to save that lizard. Miss Frizzle, Miss Frizzle's eyes lit with an idea. A situation worth exploration, Phoebe, she said. Uh-oh, what now? Don't give her any more ideas, Phoebe. Inside the bus, Miss Frizzle pulled a lever. The bus started shrinking. It turned into a gilla monster. And now the road runner was after us. Miss Frizzle stepped on the gas pedal. Hard! As I always say, when the, when the going gets hungry, the hungry get going. This is bad, bad, bad. Cool, we're a gilla monster. I hate field trips where we get eaten. A few seconds later, the road runner stooped us up, scooped us up in its beak. How could we possibly get out of this one? Arnold checked his field trip manual. Field trip manual tip number 107 to avoid being eaten become inedible, he, he read. What does that mean? It means we should become something that cannot be eaten. Dorothy Ann explained. Do I hear a suggestion to avoid digestion? Asked the fridge. Frizz. She pulled another lever. The bus shook like crazy, then turned into a spiky horned lizard. The road runner spit us out fast. It obviously didn't like lizards with spikes. So the little animals here have special ways to avoid being eaten, Phoebe realized, like being prickly. Ah, Phoebe, that's right, said the frizz. Phew, close one. Next, Phoebe made us all get out to look at a jackrabbit. Arnold, give it your hat, she said. How else is he going to keep cool? The frizz grinned. Ear conditioning, she explained. That's when the rabbit's warm blood flows through its big ears. The blood cools. Then the cooled blood flows into the rest of its body. Field trip tip number 158. When the sun is beating down on your head, put on a hat. Ear conditioning. Good one, Miss Frizzle. Warm blood flows into ears. Blood in ears is cooled. Cooled blood flows back out. Next, Phoebe wanted to help a desert tortoise. How would you like to be a tortoise roasting in the hot desert sun, she asked. Miss Frizzle's eyes glimmered. As I always say, there's more than one way to beat the heat, she said. Everyone back into the all-terrain vehicle. Now even Arnold looked worried. What would the frizz do next? I wish you hadn't asked that, Phoebe. Whew. Spin. Shrink, shrink, the all-terrain vehicle grew a tough shell. Then it burrowed down, 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 way underground. Ah, so this is what it's like to be a desert tortoise, said Miss Frizzle. She sounded delighted. A second later, everything went dark. Where are we, Tim shouted. In a tortoise burrow, in an underground shelter, the frizz explained. It's a lot cooler down here. Another animal that could that could keep cool without you without your help, Phoebe, Phoebelonia, or Phoebelunu. Uh, we kept cool in our tor in our turtle burrow until the sun went down. When we went back outside, wow, 
the desert was suddenly a very busy place. It was full of animals. What happened? cried Keisha. Arnold looked at his guidebook. Field, field tip trip number 57, he read. To beat the heat, do like most desert animals. Come out only at night. You have any sweat? You don't have any sweaters in that knapsack, do you, Arnold? Once the sun goes down, the air cools off. Carlos grinned. Another way desert animals can help themselves. Phoebe, let's face it, he said. Sads is a bust. All right, said Phoebe. Maybe these animals can protect themselves, and maybe they know how to keep cool. But there's one thing I know they need. Water. And she ran into the bus, grabbed all our water containers, and trugged, uh, trugged them, trudged them back out the door. Oh no, Phoebe was, was going to give our precious water to the animals. Wait, Phoebe, Carlos cried. Maybe they don't need our water. Uh, maybe they must get water somewhere else because they couldn't live without it. Phoebe frowned. Okay, if you're so smart, Tell me how, she challenged. As if on cue, something wet, wet splashed Carlos and Phoebe. Rain! A second later, it was pouring. We all made a dash for the bus. Rain in the desert? It doesn't happen very often. Flood! The next morning, the desert was amazing. The whole place was in bloom, and animals were everywhere. Is this a dream? Phoebe asked. No, said the frizz. It's the desert after a rainstorm. Flower power! It's as if they were waiting for enough water to bloom. Arnold bent over a big puddle. They're all shrimp. There, there are shrimp in here, he exclaimed. Shrimp, said Phoebe, in the desert? And pigs, too, Dorothy Ann added. She pointed to a pig eating a cactus. Actually, that's a peccary. A desert relative of pigs, explained the frizz. Look, cried Keisha, there is water in, the, in these cactus. Dorothy Ann looked a, a closer look. According to my observations, this piece of cactus is juicy on the inside and waxy on the outside, she said. Hey, maybe that waxy stuff keeps the water in, said Tim thoughtfully. As I always say, when it pours, the desert stores. You were right, Carlos, Phoebe said. The desert animals didn't need us to help them. They're already equipped to live here. That's right, Phoebe, said Miss Frizzle. Everything that lives here has adaptations to help cope with life in the desert. You mean plants don't not plants not needing very much water and soaking it all up as quickly as possible are adaptations? asked Dorothy Ann. Field trip number 999. For those without special desert adaptations, always travel with a teacher with frizzy ha red hair. Hmm. Absolutely correct, said the frizz. And a lizard having spikes is an adaptation that helps keep you off the menu, said Ralphie. And a turtle burrowing under sand and a jackrabbit having big ears are adaptations for beating the heat, Wanda said. Yes, agreed Miss Frizzle. All the things that live here have special features, adaptations for survival. She, she sighed happily. It makes so much sense. By the time we got back to school, we were all very tired, especially Arnold. Well, I have to say, except for the part where we almost got eaten, he mumbled wearily, and the part where we almost burnt up in the sun, and the part where we almost drowned in a flood. My field trip manual was really helpful. Well, now that I know, all these plants and animals have adaptations to help them cope with, with living in the desert. That gives us some time to save, some, to save something else, Phoebe said. Everyone else was, was so tired, or was too tired to even think about it. But this time, it really is an animal in need, Phoebe insisted. We'll call ourselves Sash, S-A-S-H. Phoebe pointed out the window. S-A-S-H stands for Students Against Sleepyheads, she said with a giggle. Carlos, we cried. 
He was still inside the school bus, sound asleep. He obviously has no adaptations to cope with desert field trips. BB joked. Miss Frizzle smiled. As I always say, if you can't take the heat, get out of the desert. Phoebe, hello. Kid, is this the magic school bus? Phoebe, yes, but... Kid, good, because you see, I'm starting a new group. S-O-K-R, Save Our Kangaroo Rats. And I want Phoebe to be president. You do? I mean, that's nice of you to say that, but kangaroo rats don't need to be saved. Kid, you mean they have adaptations that make it possible for them to live in the desert too? Phoebe, right. For instance, they may never take a drink in their entire lives. They can get all the water they need from the seeds and plants they eat. Kid, one more question. Do you really know Phoebe? Phoebe, yes, in fact. Kid, could you do me a favor? Just tell her that I think she's the greatest. Goodbye. Sigh, maybe I should answer the phone more often. All plants, including desert plants, use water. You can see how by doing this experiment. You'll need a white daisy and white car or white carnation. Food coloring. A glass of water. Put several drops of food coloring into the water until you have a nice, deep color. Then put your flower into the water. In a few days, your flower will change color. It will have absorbed the water through the stem. What have we learned today, my friends? We have learned from Miss Frizzle the amazing world of the desert. Also, we learned that adaptations help the world deal with change. Have fun exploring the world around you. Be sure to like, favorite, and subscribe. Stay tuned for more Big Daddy Storytime. God bless.